Welcome again to Real Crusades History. Amid the octave of Pentecost, A.D. 1212, began one of the most important events in the history of the Spanish Crusades. In the Christian city of Toledo, there gathered a massive army of knights from Castile, Aragon, Leon, Navarre, Portugal, and France, with the intent of prosecuting a crusade against the fearsome Alamoads, a dynasty of zealous North African Muslims who had lately become a threat to the Christian kingdoms of northern Iberia. The crusade had been authorized earlier that year by Pope Innocent III, who at Trinity Sunday urged the Christian rulers of Spain to aid one another against the enemies of the cross of the Lord, who not only aspire to the destruction of the Spains, but also threaten to vent their rage on Christ's faithful in other lands, and, if they can, which God forbid, oppress the Christian name. The crusade was to be led by Alfonso VIII, the brilliant king of Castile, and his allies Sancho VII of Navarre and Pedro II of Aragon, as well as the Knights Templar, Knights Hospitaller, and the Knights of Calatrava and Santiago. Alfonso, through his skilled diplomacy, managed to bring the kingdoms of Spain closer together than ever before, and indeed, he laid the groundwork for the ultimate unification of the Spains two centuries later. On June 20th, the crusading army departed Toledo on the way of the Lord. Meanwhile, to the south in Seville, which was still in Muslim hands, the Almohad Caliph Muhammad al-Nasir set out to meet the Christians. On St. John's Day, a French contingent in the vanguard captured Malagon. After a four-day siege, Calatrava capitulated and was restored to the order of warrior monks for which it was named. Bypassing Salvatierra, the crusaders, guided by a mysterious shepherd, crossed the Puerto del Moradal, marching on Las Navas de Tolosa, 22 miles north of Beza and Obeda, allowing them to organize a sneak attack on the Muslim camp. Archbishop Rodrigo gathered the knights together to confess their sins and receive communion before the encounter with the Muslims. On July 16, the crusaders surprised the gigantic North African host. Pedro II and the Aragonese took up the left columns, while Sancho VII and the Knights of Navarre drew up the right flank. In the center massed the Castilian knights, as well as the Templars, Hospitallers, and other warrior orders. Moroccan and Iberian Muslims formed the bulk of al-Nasir's army, with some light Berber and Arab cavalry on the front line. Al-Nasir himself commanded from the rear, surrounded by his black slave bodyguards. The heavily armed Spanish knights smashed through the Islamic forces, shattering the Almohad lines. The Navarrese troops, led by Sancho VII, penetrated as far as the caliph's bodyguard, slaughtering many of the slave troops of Al-Nasir, who himself only narrowly escaped. The military orders fought hard on the front lines, and some of the only Christian casualties were from their ranks. Overall, it was a sweeping victory for the Christians and a crushing, humiliating defeat for the Muslims. What remained of Al-Nasir's army fled in terror to Marrakech. Archbishop Rodrigo led the knights in singing Te Deum Laudemus. Among the enormous amounts of booty captured from the Muslim camp was the tapestry covering the caliph's tent, sent to the monastery of Las Huelgas, where it still hangs today, as well as the caliph's lance, gold-stitched standard, and silk tent, all sent as trophies to Pope Innocent III in Rome. King Alfonso VIII sent the following account of his victory to Pope Innocent. On their side, a hundred thousand men or more fell in the battle, according to the estimate of the Saracens whom we captured. But the army of the Lord, incredible though it may be, unless it be a miracle, hardly twenty-five or thirty Christians of our whole army fell. Oh, what happiness! Oh, what thanksgiving! Pope Innocent III was elated and had the king's letter read before the people of Rome. Alfonso's daughter, Berengaria, wrote of the victory to her sister, Blanche of Castile. Our father, 
the king and lord, conquered Miramamalin in a pitched battle. We believe this to be a signal of honor because until now, it was unheard of that the king of Morocco should be overcome on the battlefield. Las Navas de Tolosa proved a turning point in the history of Spain. From then on, the Christians had the advantage and Islam was in retreat. The Alamoads never recovered from their defeat, and their empire was soon to end. The victory set the stage for the great conquests of 13th century warrior kings like Fernando III of Castile and James I of Aragon. For those of you interested in my historical fiction, I finished the first draft of my first novel, which deals with the First Crusade, and I have begun work on my second novel, which is a sequel taking place between 1110 and 1120 during the reigns of Baldwin I and Baldwin II as they established the Kingdom of Jerusalem. I plan on finishing a final draft for my first novel in the coming months and ultimately having it ready for publication early next year. Thanks so much to all of you for watching and taking an interest in the Crusades. Next week's video, by request from Failure Bannock, will deal with King Baldwin IV of Jerusalem.